Okay. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, my name is Sandra and I'm a consultant in the Southwest region of uh, New South Wales. And I'm also a team leader for a team called, a fantastic team by the way, called the Blade Runners. And um, I've been doing Thermomix for seven years now. And um, yeah, it's just started because I wanted to uh, have, flex have a business of my own that was flexible and that I'd be able to work around to my family. I probably didn't think that I would last this long. Um, had a lot of doubts in, in the very beginning of whether I would be able to, to run a business like this. Um, so, you know, if, if this is something that you're thinking of and you've also got some doubts, then um, it just, everything just falls into place and everything just, you know, works, work, works out well when, uh, when you're loving what you do, especially when you love the product that you're selling as well. I think that's um, always really important. So enough about me, um, a bit about the company and Volverk. So Volverk is a German company that make Thermomix and uh, all Thermomixes, they get made uh, in a factory on the border of Germany and France, and then they're exported all over the world. And Volverk is over 130 years old. So they've, they're quite established in, um, in, in the market. And um, uh, look, in, in Australia, we've been here for 20 years. We sold over 500,000 Thermomixes. Uh, so yeah, we've done really well, especially during lockdown actually. So um, if you're looking for a business that you can do from home, we, we tend to sell more Thermomixes uh, during, during lockdown when people are home. Uh, our consultants are able to do everything from home. So it's, it's quite an amazing uh, opportunity. And um, we currently have a half price business kit as well. So um, if you're thinking of joining, it's a great opportunity. So, um, oh, there you go. So we like to be upfront about the price early on in the demo, you know, so you can judge a value for yourself. Uh, it's two, three, five, nine. I had to look because um, it's just recently changed. Two, three, five, nine. It comes with everything included. This month we get some previews, so you can get a cookbook. Uh, and an oval thermo server, which I'll whip out very shortly, and a cookbook that I should have you with me, but because I was disorganized, I don't. But I can show you what it is. It's our 20th anniversary cookbook, and it's an awesome book with the, the most gorgeous recipes in there. Um, we have several payment options available, but I can go through those uh, at the end, okay? And Or, you know, uh, have a chat to your consultants as well, or myself, and we can give you that information. We're going to start cooking. All right. So um, I've chosen a few dishes for uh, for tonight. It may seem like a bit of a mishmash um, of dishes, but it's stuff that I need for the weekend. And the beauty of doing these things virtual as consultants is that what we cook is for our family. So it's pretty good. Um, so we're going to start off with some basic bread, bread rolls. And for those of you who are just starting to master the art of bread making, I'll share some tips with you. Um, I'm going to make a quiche Lorraine. So I'm going to talk to you, uh, talk to you a bit about pastry. Uh, quick Messerman beef curry. Now this is a family favorite. And also a dessert called the Rava Payasam. It's a, uh, an Indian dessert with semolina. Absolutely delicious. Huge family favorite here and so simple to make. So we have an Indian dessert and a Thai main. So that's what I meant by mishmash a bit. And we have Kish Lorraine, which is Aussie, I think. I'm not sure. So uh, regardless, it's they're all really easy and uh, delicious recipes that you're going to learn some tips from me. So um, if you're new to Thermomix, this is cookie do. So I've put all the recipes on our weekly planner. And what I did was I created a shopping list, um, went to the shops. And as I put the ingredients in, into my trolley, I just ticked off what, um, what um, I needed because it creates a shopping list for you. So you can fill up your whole week do your shopping and then you've got your ingredients to go uh, for, for the whole week. So it keeps you organized and it saves you time and money as well in that sense. Um, all right, so we're going to start off with bread rolls. So I tap on the screen and then I can scroll down and it gives me uh, all the uh, steps and the ingredients that I need. You probably won't be able to see it all because of the lighting here in the kitchen. Um, I have tried different light settings and it just doesn't work. It's, it's really uh, hard to see the screen. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add some um, wheat grains. So I actually don't have wheat grains, so I'm going to replace it with buckwheat. Still haven't managed to find wheat grain, but I really love buckwheat in bread. It's only 100 grams, but it just has some really nice flavour to the bread rolls. And um, I'm doing these bread rolls with a twist for the family, which I'll share with you in a moment. So whenever we need to weigh something, the scales pop up automatically. So, uh, we've, and so we weighed in 100 grams. And now it says to put the lid on, which we've done. And then we're going to mill th these ingredients. So for those of you who don't know this, when you are milling with a Thermomix, these blades need to be really dry. Um, and to dry them, you just need to whiz the blades on speed 10. And if there's any water in the bowl or around the blades, the air circulating in the bowl will, will dry the, the bowl. I'm still laughing that I was late. Sorry, I'm still thinking, how, how did I do this? Anyway, um, so one minute and then it tells you to go to speed 10. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Okay, that's more than done. So buckwheat is actually quicker to mill than, than wheat grains. So you can get a really nice flour consistency in um, under 30 seconds. So there is our, our buckwheat. So um, yeah, it's flour. So the, the freshness in this is just amazing. You can get buckwheat flour, but if you can get the, the kernels instead and then just mill what you need, it is it's so much better. So the recipe says to tip it out, but I always just leave it in. I just don't think you need to tip it out. And now we're going to add 300 grams of water. And I've already got it lukewarm from, from the tap. I think that helps with time if you're in a rush. Otherwise, the Thermomix can heat up the water for you. So now we're going to add two teaspoons of yeast. So just in there. And we're going to pop the lid on. And now what it's going to do is, is it's going to heat that water to 37 degrees on speed one. Um, it'll tell me when it gets to 37 degrees. It won't take those two minutes because I added lukewarm water. So as soon as it's ready, we can stop it. Um, what was I going to get? Okay, so I've got my flour here. So you need baker's flour for bread. Um, I was asked the other day, can you use plain flour? You can as a last resort. Um, I just noticed something dirty here. You can as a last resort, but you're not going to get a good result in your bread. You won't rise as much. You won't have the crunch. Um, probably because it won't rise as much, probably be a bit dense, not as soft. So um, you can get uh, five kilo bags, 10 kilo bags from uh, five kilo bags from Woolies and, and Coles. They'll, they'll sell them. Uh, Costco have 10, uh, 12 kilo bags and big um, fruit shops will sell them as well. The Mildura brand, so you can get that. Um, okay, so that's reached 37 degrees. Okay, so that's nice and warm. And you can also add a bit of sugar, which I'm going to do because I, I want the, uh, about a teaspoon because I want the, the dough to rise fast. Well, no, it can't be too fast because then your bread won't turn out very well, but it helps it um, rise a little faster. Okay, so now we're going to add 20 grams of olive oil. So homemade bread has, can you hear my kids laughing? They're in the bath. Uh, five or six ingredients, I think. Um, maximum six if you add bread improvement from memory. So very minimal ingredients because that's all you need to make bread. I mean, compared to shop-bought where it has 100 ingredients, right, I'm exaggerating, I okay, say 50. Um, there is, oops, way over. Yeah, there is a lot of ingredients and you can save so much money making your own. And a teaspoon of salt. In there. And now we are going to mix it all six seconds on speed six 
And I'll do this slowly if you haven't heard this tip before. Because if you go really fast, to see if the, the flower goes up to the lid and you get the lid all dirty. I'll just do it slowly. I'll show you. So that lid just has the milled flour and then it's given it a mix and now it's going to knead it. So it just needs for two minutes and we just turn the dial and it starts kneading. Now, because we've added a different ingredient, instead of adding wheat grain, we added buckwheat. We just got to look at it and see how it comes together. So after 30 seconds, if it's still lumpy, then you need to add a bit more water, which is what's going to happen there. So let me just pop these ingredients aside. Okay, so let me have a look. Actually, no, that, that's coming together nicely. I'll show you. So that's been kneading now for 25 seconds. Okay. So that's actually coming together. Can you see that really, really nicely there? And so we'll just continue kneading for two minutes. So when it's kneading, this is the only time you need to supervise a, a Thermomix because it, it moves around. Um, and if Susan's on the call, she would also say, if you're trying to puree something that's really chunky as well, then you do need to um, supervise your Thermomix in those instances. Um, they're probably the only two instances that you need to be with your Thermomix. All the other times that like, you can walk away and, and it does its thing. Um, Judging by the Thermomix now, it's not moving a lot. You know, I, I, I'll be honest, I'll probably walk away, but I'll keep, I'll keep a short distance where I can, where I can look at it. But yeah, I don't need to add more water. That's looking really nice. But if, if by this stage your dough was still lumpy and not smooth coming together in a ball, then you would want to add a bit more water so it comes together a little bit nicer. Otherwise, that uh, dough would be too dry. So I've got my mat. So I'll just grab the other one actually. I wrap my mat like this if you, if you guys haven't seen before. So I, I, mat, I wrap it like this so I can pop it away in my drawer. And then, so, cause when I wash it, it's wet, I wrap it in the tea towel and it dries it. And so then I can, you know, put it away in my drawer and it's not going to, um, what do you call it? Because you won't have that humidity rolled. It's, you know, you don't want that because of um, mold and so on. Okay, so that's done. And I'm just gonna put a bit of olive oil on my mat and I'm gonna tip it out of the bowl. So you can see it's come really nicely together. And then I, let me just get a, a tea towel. And then you just twist the bottom of the bowl. Can you hear my kids? They're having a good old time in the bath, those two. All right. So you just roll the bottom and then it just comes out really nice. And then you can hear my oldest daughter who's playing, playing Minecraft with her friends and she, she's screaming. Crazy house today. All right. And then you just roll it into a ball. And you can get the rest of the dough. Actually, there's a bit of dough there. So I'll, I'll share that tip with you guys. So if you've got a bit of dough left on the blaze, you just put the bowl back in. And then um, I'll just cancel this recipe so I can get out of the recipe. And then you just tap on the speed and go to speed 10 for like a second. And the dough that's on the blades gets flicked to the side of the bowl and then you can grab it with a, with a spatula or with your hand. Like I said, the, the blades don't cut just by touching them because they do work more on, on speed than, uh, than they do sharpness. So oh my gosh all right okay and then now I, I'm going to wash the bowl very quickly so because it's going to wrap in it be wrapped in the mat um the dough will, well this that's distracting me all this screaming the dough will rise really nicely in here and then see so you, you know you don't need to flower your bench and, and do all of that so I'm going to give this bowl a quick whiz Actually, no, I'm not because I'm going to make pastry. Pastry is dough. So I'm not going to bother washing that bowl. There you go. So uh, you can be a little bit clever that way. You don't need to wash the bowl every single time. Now, here's my other bowl. All right. So here's another one. Okay. So now we're going to get our, our curry going because whilst the curry is cooking, then I can show you 
vacation and everything else, all right? So this is a huge family favourite. And I've had this in Thai restaurants many times and I'm disappointed every single time um, because they make it too sweet and um, too sweet and too many peanuts that I don't like. So being able to make it at home really easily just means you can tweak those flavours so it's more how you like it. Uh, and more, more enjoyable. So this is something that I would never get from the Thai restaurant anymore because I know I can make it at home really, really easily. So we, the first part of the recipe is to steam potatoes. So you cut your potatoes like this size and it steams them for about 12 minutes. I've already done that to save time. But to be completely honest with you, if I was going to do this for dinner at home, I wouldn't take up 12 minutes in the Thermomix just to boil some potatoes. I would boil that on my stovetop because it's just too easy to boil potatoes. And I would continue with the curry in the Thermomix and uh, not bother with boiling potatoes in the Thermomix. And I would free up the Thermomix to make the more, uh, more difficult things rather than just, just boiling. So you can tap, keep tapping next to get to where you want to go. Another tip is if you go to recipe detail and you scroll down, then you can tap on the step that you want to go to. So you don't have to keep going next, next, next. You go to recipe detail, tap on the step that you want and the Thermomix will take you to that step. And this is the same for both the TM5 and the TM6. So um, that is something that I learned um, only like a couple of years ago. And I've, you know, had a Thermomix for, for a, a long time. All right. So the first thing we're going to add is peanut oil. So one tablespoon. And if you're like me, you can just guesstimate what that one tablespoon is, or you can grab a, uh, a tablespoon. We're going to add some um, brown onion. So 180, it says one brown onion, approximately 180 grams. Uh, you can tap on the scales if you want to weigh your onion. Uh, but normally, you know, when you're cooking at home, you probably really don't weigh your, your onion. You just put in what that onion is and, and you can do the same thing with the Thermomix. So now I've gone up to 200 grams, which, you know, that doesn't worry me at all. That's absolutely fine. So just remember that when you're cooking with, uh, with the Thermomix, it, it's, yes, you're cooking in a the thermal cooker, but you can treat it like, you know, when you're cooking uh, with a pot on the stove or a fry pan, so you should taste as you go, tweak the flavours because everybody has different palates and what you might like, someone else may, may find bland. So um, yeah, definitely taste as you go. So we're gonna add 100 grams of Massaman curry paste. I think there is a recipe to make this in the Thermomix. I personally have never made it. I've always got these little jars. So this jar is, 200 well 195 grams so what I do I put in 100 grams and the other 100 grams I freeze it so when I want to make my next batch I know I've got half a jar frozen um, that and the paste doesn't freeze rock hard which is really good like it stays a paste so um, so you can easily just you know pop it out of the freezer and, and use it so I'll do 100 grams let me just wash my finger 100 grams of that and now we're going to uh, chop the onion let me grab my measuring cup I've only got one around here somewhere and three seconds on speed seven okay and so we added in that peanut oil in the beginning remember so what it's done is I'll just scrape it down Good. So my chunks were quite big for the onion. So let me just go back and do speed five for a few seconds because there was a couple of chunks still there. So you can do that as well. So there we go. So that, that's better now. So you can always go back, whether it's in the TM5 or the TMC, go back and repeat that step. So that is a lot better. That smells so good already. Okay. And now we're just going to bring down the sides and we're going to saute that. 
saute it for three minutes. Three minutes on speed one, and it's gonna do that on 100 degrees. Um, okay, so I'll just grab the other ingredients. So this is um, coconut cream. Now coconut cream in winter is solid. So when I grabbed my can, it was absolutely solid. So I just had the can in boiling water. And that's what I was doing with when Valentina called and said, where are you? Um, because I needed to um, turn the coconut cream into a cream so I can pour it in. Because if you don't do that, what happens is when you open up the can of cre uh, coconut cream, the uh the solids are on top and your liquids on the bottom so if you just grab the solid it's actually too coconut creamy for the dish if that makes sense i don't, I don't know how to explain that very well so you do need to mix it so i just pop that can in now i can pour it in this is a 400 gram can the rest of this says 250 grams so whatever's left over I freeze it and then I just use it for next time so I don't waste it because uh, if you get nice coconut cream, it can be um, expensive like the AM brand and so on. So you don't want it to go to waste. So for those that haven't seen this happen before, it's sauteing the onion with the, um, with the paste and you can walk away. So you don't need to, to supervise it. Unlike uh, something on the stovetop, you work, walk away, you can burn. In this case, I can walk away and I'm going to grab the beef for this. Mm. Okay, so I actually have beef eye fillet that I, I like. Uh, I usually get it from Aldi. Um, and that's where I got it today as well. I was at Woolies and $50 a kilo at Woolies is just crazy. Aldi have the same for $28. What a massive price difference. And I like using the beef I fill it because it's nice and soft. And because this recipe, it's called quick maximum curry for a reason, because it is super quick. So you want a nice cut of meat. Because if you use, um, you know, beef strips, you know, the ones that you get already in strips, I think they use like sizzle steak for that. And it's going to be really tough. And there's really nothing worse than serving up a dish and, and your jaw hurts at the end because of all the chewing. It's just not nice. So if you just invest in really nice cut of meat, if you can, um, you, you won't regret it. So, all right. Uh, okay. So another tip. So this recipe says to put kefir lime leaf. Now, when I find it on special, like I was lucky enough to find today, I'll get a few of them and then I freeze it. So I pop it in the freezer in this container. So when I need it for next time, I just pop it out of the freezer and into my curry. So you can freeze these sort of things. So if you see um, uh, another thing, sage, for instance, if I see it on special, because um, I'm not like, you know, I don't really have a green thumb. The only thing I can grow is parsley. Um, but if I find sage, then I will freeze it. And uh, so I've got it for my stock because that's basically the only thing I use it for, my vegetable stock paste. Okay, so let's have a look. So that's given that a saute. It's not so good already. And now we're going to add 800 grams of beef rump steak. Well, it says beef rump steak, but as I mentioned before, I used uh, the eye fillet. Today I did strong enough and I used rump. Um, just remember that when you buy something like rump, uh, so if you say you bought rump for this, you have to look at the grain of the meat. So you've got to put your, you know, your, your steak down and you get, have to look at the grain. Is it going that way? If it is, then you cut your strips this way. If your grain is going that way, you've got to cut your strips that way. So you always have to cut against the green and that's just going to ensure that you're not going to get chewy meat so now with beef i fill it i do that as well when i cut it have a look at the grain and then you cut against uh the grain now it says to add peanuts we're not peanut fans in this house so i'm not adding peanuts at all to this dish and now what it's going to do is just going to give this meat a quick fry with the massaman paste and um and the onion for three minutes. 
And let me just grab. Okay. Bring this up clean. Um, the next ingredients we're going to add, we're going to add some uh, fish paste, some ta ta tamarind paste there, and, um, and our coconut cream. And then it cooks for 10 minutes and it's done. So it's such a quick dish. Now, this makes a lot. Um, I think I've got close to a kilo of the beef, um, beef eye fillet. And uh, my plan, because I'm, I also made beef stroganoff today, so I know we're going to have quite a few leftovers. So what I'm going to do with those leftovers is on Sunday, I'm running a, a class on how to make pastry. So your short crust pastry, your puff pastry, gluten-free short crust pastry, shoe pastry. And my um, consultant who's joining me is going to be showing how to make pasta. So because I'm going to be making all these pastries on Sunday, I'm going to use that pastry to make little pies. So the Massaman curry beef is going to go into some curry pies. Um, and the stroganoff as well, I'm going to use that to, um, to fill some pies as well, just to use up a lot of that pastry that I'm presenting on Sunday. So if you want to know about that class, it's, um, it's been run by our, by our branch, which uh, so our branch for Thermix has uh, close to 150 consultants. Our branch goes from... Uh, uh, covers the area of Wollongong, Southwest Sydney and Canberra. And we are running a whole day of presentations of different, different things. Um, I don't know what they are right now off by heart because my brain isn't functioning too well today. Um, it's all the homeschooling and everything else. Um, but yeah, I'm doing one o'clock for, for pastry. But if you want the, the link to that, let me know and I can send you that link. It's $10 a ticket but it is an all day thing and you can hop on and hop off. Wow, oh, I like that, um, that way to explain it. It's like a hop on, hop off tour. <laughs> it's the same Zoom code all day, but you can join and then come back for another session and you get the recording as well for the whole day. You get all the recordings that you can watch back um, for that. Yeah, so um, look out for that because that, that we did one I think it was like a month ago and it was really popular yeah we got some really good reviews from from our customers with that and all the money that's made from the tickets goes to charity so um we're not doing this to to make money uh, but we're doing it to offer it to uh different charities around Wollongong and Southwest Sydney Marnie I'll send it to you definitely all right so just have a few more seconds to go that's done and now, so there we go. So it's given that a nice mix there. Now you just have to be careful when it's eye fillet because you can, it doesn't need uh, the cooking time that the other dishes need because it is such a soft cut of meat. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. So 250 grams here, the coconut cream. And now it says to add palm sugar. I don't have palm sugar. I actually tried to look for it, but I, I couldn't find it. So, but I didn't spend too much time on it. Um, so I'm just going to add like a sprinkle of raw sugar. I'm not going to bother too much with that. Because remember I said in the beginning, I don't like this too sweet. So I don't add a lot of the sugar. Um, 30 grams of fish sauce. So this is where you get like the sweet and the sour. Come on. <laughs> Halfway there. <laughs> All right, okay, there we go. And the tamarind paste. Hold on, let me just grab a spoon. So 15 grams of tamarind paste. Ooh, that's probably just right. Okay. And a teaspoon of meat stock. I don't have meat stock, so I'm not even gonna put it in, but I am gonna add a bit of salt in there. Okay. And Cinnamon, I'm not going to add cinnamon because I'm not a fan in, uh, in this dish. No cinnamon, but I'm going to add the tour, the, the tour, the two lime leaves. So, mm, like that in there. And now it says to add the reserve steamed potatoes, but I'm not because I oversteamed them and I know they're cooked. So I'm actually not going to put them in. 
I'll add them in at the end and th they'll be fine at the end. So if they still needed a bit of cooking, you throw them in. But if I do that, I'm going to be left with no potatoes because I oversteam them. I've had such a great day, as you can tell. <laughs> All right. So without the measuring cup, now it says 10 minutes. I'm not going to do 10 minutes. I'll probably do eight because this meat is so soft. I'm actually starting to get worried that it's going to fall apart. So <laughs> there we go. Actually, I'm going to pop in the Thermomix behind so we can keep going here at the front. So that's the, um, the perks of having two machines. We're very lucky as consultants because we can earn them for free. Um, and we actually, in the next three months, with all the sales that we make, we earn points. And those points can go towards another Thermomix if we like or other mix shop items as well. So we're really lucky. So eight minutes, 90 degrees on reverse. So I'll just pop that here. Eight minutes, 90 degrees, reverse. Don't forget reverse if you do this. What speed? Uh, speed one. Okay, and without the measuring cup, perfect. Okay, so let me just give this a clean. All right. Um, Val, I'm pretty sure you're monitoring, monitoring, monitoring the chat. <laughs> if there's anything on there that I need to know, let me know. But I'm sure you're doing. It's all good. All good. Okay, awesome. Thank all you. Good. All right. So next thing, we're going to do our pastry for, for the quiche. I remember I said, I don't need to wash the bowl because it's just flour anyway. Who cares? Um, so I'll just leave it in there. So just a little little hack to keep things moving, um, especially if only got you know one bowl. Um, sometimes you can do that. Just plan. Okay, what am I going to make? Okay, what what can I make first so I don't have to wash that bowl in between for the next thing? There's a lot of um, things that you can do like that just to make your life easier. Okay, so cancel recipe. The screen's really dirty. Very messy today. All right, cancel yes. And we'll go back to my weekly planner. And I'm going to tap on the quiche, quiche Lorraine. So there's a few on there, but they're all basically the same. As I was searching for this, I found one called a uh, leak, uh, quiche leak or leak quiche or something, something like that. Anyway, um, it just seemed really, really yummy as well. And it's a gluten free. Pastry base with almond meal, rolled oats. Um, so that one looked really nice as well. All right, so the first thing, we're gonna grate some cheese. So I've got some um, leftover mozzarella cheese here. It says gr Gruyere cheese is really hard to find. And it's so expensive if you do find it. You can use any cheese. So I just happen to have mozzarella, but if you want to use tasty cheese or um you made the leek ones nice okay yeah it looks really really yummy and i've got leek in the fridge um and i considered um doing that one but then i just didn't have time to get it all prepared for, for tonight so 50 grams of cheese any cheese that you want and let me just grab a measuring cup Whose measuring cups go missing because family members just put them everywhere? I've got a TM5 one, so I'll use that one. So um, we're going to grate that. 10 seconds on speed eight, seven. All right, that took like one second. That's done. Because <laughs> it's um, mozzarella cheese is softer. So obviously it's going to be very quick. There we go. So that cheese is just going to be sprinkled on, on, on the quiche. Okay, very easy. And you know what? I'm not going to wash the bowl either because whatever cheese is left there is just going to go in the pastry. Who cares, right? Perfect. Actually, the recipe doesn't tell you to wash the bowl either. So, all right, preheat oven to 180 degrees. Now, plain flour. That's what I did. Oh, here we are. Okay, so 150 grams of plain flour. Okay, I've gone a bit over, doesn't matter. 
and 75 grams of unsalted butter chilled. But I've actually got it frozen. So I'm going to grab it. I actually froze a whole heap of butter today in preparation for Sunday because when you're making pastries, especially like puff pastry, your um, the butter needs to be frozen. So I'll just add a bit more butter because I added a bit more flour. So yeah, so I'm actually, now that it's frozen, I'm going to pop it into a Ziploc bag and, um, and have it ready for whenever I need pastry because I have been caught out. Oh, that's sugar. I don't want sugar. I've been caught out before where I want to make pastry. Oh, I don't have frozen butter. Then I have to wait for that um, butter to freeze before I can make the pastry. So I'm not, won't be caught out again. I'm just going to pop this in the freezer. Okay, so 50 grams of water. So you want chilled water as well. It doesn't say, but just make sure it is chilled. There we go. You know what? That was on minus nine for some reason. So I want 40. <laughs> Trying to get my math spring working. 41 maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily I saw that. So yeah, always make sure that your scales are on zero, especially if you're doing stuff like pastry, because those measurements have to be precise. Otherwise you can run into trouble. All right, 20 seconds on speed four. Okay, our pastry is done. Now, because I use frozen butter, because I've done pastry like this so many times before, it comes out to like a, um, a crumb consistency, which is, which is normal. And then what you do is you tip your bowl upside down, do that. Okay, so that's done. And then you bring it together with your, with your hands and the warmth of your hands just brings it all together. But you do have to move quickly because you don't want this um, to get too soft. And then if you tap next, it does tell you everything that we're doing. So you tip out your shape into a bowl and using a rolling pin, roll out pastry to um, on a lightly floured surface. Now, um, I, I still like to, even though the thermo mat is non-stick, I still like to flour um, because when I want to lift the pastry to pop it in here, I just find it, it's a lot easier. So I've got this one here with the what? <laughs> hey, Liam like that and so I'm just going to grab the flour and I'm the generous leaf flour hi like that and I'm going to grab my rolling pin and you just roll now I really like these new ones because it's got the the circles there so you can roll it out so I know I need to go to the outer outer circle and you just roll it out nicely Okay. Now there's nothing like homemade pastry. I know you, you can buy, you know, short cut, short crust pastry and puff pastry, but making yourself really is, is not hard with, uh, with the Thermomix and, um, and it's a lot cheaper too, really. And, you know, you, you, you really do cut out a lot of nasties, especially in things like puff pastry. All right. We've been talking and that's done. So just have a look. Let me grab the spatula. Oh, the Thermomix was on top of that. I hope it didn't affect the scale. So there we go. So now I'm going to add the, the potatoes in there. And they're quite soft. And I'll just mix it through. And I'll probably, you know, I can probably cook it for another couple of minutes because the the meat has held held its shape very well so i will cook it for another minute just to mix that potato through and what happens is the the potato gives the sauce a nice creaminess as well 
So I will definitely do that just for those extra two minutes because now I know that that meat is okay. Like it, I didn't want it to, to shred. Um, 90s. Okay, there we go. Oops, I've got a bit of curry on there. Okay, so you want to roll it out to a, a ball and then you can use your hands just to get it to the shape of a nice circle there. Okay, a bit more. Now this one you don't need to blind bake as well. Some pie recipes, uh, quiche, it, it says to blind bake. This one it doesn't. So it's actually quite easy, such an easy recipe. So just roll it out. If it starts to, to break apart in some area, just squash it with your fingers. Now it's actually really nice. I can lift it and, and pop it there. Make sure you have no holes because you are gonna pour liquid on top. So you don't want it to, um, to drip out. Okay, so that's good. So like I was saying before, it's actually really easy for me to lift it and take it there. Um, another way you could do it is you could roll it on your rolling pin and then bring it there and roll it on onto here. Now there's a few thing, few things that you can, a oh, few, yeah, few methods here to get it to a nice shape. Like you can use your fingers like I'm doing here and lift up the pastry to the to the sides. And you maybe grab a piece, some pieces from one end and pop it on the other end. If it was longer, if after putting the pastry on top, it was falling off the sides, you can grab your rolling pin and do this. And it cuts the, it cuts the pastry. So, um, and then you get a nice uh, pastry shell. So let me just, now I knew, you know, I have done this recipe many times before. But, you know, like I said, my brain just isn't working very well today. I'm pretty sure that now I can see that I normally do recipe and a half of pastry because I don't think that it's enough. So I've got some areas here that, um, that aren't tall enough. So if you do make this, I would suggest recipe and a half. Um, so you have plenty of pastry to work with and not have to do what I'm doing right now. There we go. So that, that's good enough. I'm hoping that that will be good enough. But yeah, keep that in mind. Recipe and a half, you won't have, you won't have that problem. Okay, oh, look at that. So some Thermomix recipes give you a video um, <clears throat> and you just tap on the video and it tells you what, um, in this case is telling you, oh, showing you the, the rolling pin method. So this is really cool. So obviously they've used double recipe for this and look at the amount of pastry there or maybe my thing is too, too big. It could be that because I actually didn't check the size. I just grabbed what I have. Okay, so showing you what to do there. I love these little, little videos, they're so cool. Very cool. Okay, all right, so, um, now it says to add, I'm just going to give the, the bowl a quick, quick wash. There's a lot of flour there. So give it a quick, quick rinse. And um, I'll show you how the bowl cleans itself. Okay, there we go. Um, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some bacon cubes. Now, I happen to have these in the fridge. They're just bacon cubes from, um, from Aldi. Um, you can use, you know, obviously bacon and then cube it. Does it matter? Yeah, so I'm not even sure how much this has. Oh look, almost got 170, that's good enough. And now it's, it's actually going to like saute that for a while. Um, so I think it's only like three minutes on 100 degrees on the soft spoon. So whilst it does that, I am going to crack. So we get, it's going to have four eggs, milk, which I'm going to grab, and some cream. <clears throat> and um, listen, if you had um, leftover roast chicken, you could throw that in here. You can, um, you know, 
leftover chorizo, sausages, whatever. You don't have to just stick to the bacon. Obviously, then it won't be called quiche, you know, um, quiche Lorraine. Uh, it'll be something else, quiche, whatever I have in the fridge. Um, so I do a lot of that with, uh, with quiches, especially if I have leftover chicken, roast chicken, whatever. I'll, um, I'll, throw, I'll throw a quiche together. It's, it's just too easy. And, um, and it turned out really good. So actually, I think there is a recipe. I think it's on the Portuguese cookie dough. It's called quiche with whatever, quiche whatever you have in the fridge. That one is called, <laughs> which is perfect. All right. Okay, I'm just going to turn my oven on. I forgot to do that. Okay, so four eggs for this recipe. And, um, oh, that curry is done. So I'm just going to pop that on a plate so you can see what it looks like. It smells divine. It smells just how I like it. So it's not overly sweet. doesn't have that overpowering sweetness. Now you serve this with some um, nice uh, rice. So, whoops, there we go. There's that curry. And yeah, and because I'm making it at home, I've personalized it to my taste. So I didn't add the peanuts and all, you know, the extra sugar and so on. And it's just exactly how we like it. So it's more, more enjoyable than paying for a bomb. Because um, these things cost a lot when you're getting takeaway or when you eat out. It's a lot cheaper to make it yourself, isn't it? Okay, that's done. Okay, so I'm going to pop that in our tart shell. And now it says to drain it in the simmering basket, but there's no liquid there. So a uh, bit of common sense uh, here. Don't need to, to strain it at all because there's no fat because it was just the cubes. Okay. Next step is also really easy. I mean, look, making something like a quiche Lorraine does not get any easier than this, even when you have to make your own pastry. Four eggs, uh, 50 grams of milk. Let me have a look at the scales of zero. 50 grams and 100 grams. Now it says creme fraiche or cream. I'm adding thickened cream, all same, same. So don't be afraid to, you know, to tweak things a little. It's absolutely fine. You probably do that with other recipes without using a Thermomix. So um, it's okay to do that with a Thermomix. Okay, I'll never forget. I was with um, Matt Preston from, oh, is it Matt? Oh, geez. Um, anyway, he's from MasterChef and he was making a wonton soup. And um, he, you know, he, he's the one had, you know, that said that he, he created a recipe and to him, it needed more salt to half the other half of people in the room. They said it was fine. Um, and, um, and that's where he said as well, you got to taste as you go because everyone's palate is different. 30 seconds on speed four. Oops, tap next accidentally. Speed four. That's just going to mix it all together. So in the one bowl, and I only just gave it a really quick rinse to get rid of all that flour, we've, we've done a quiche Lorraine. So how good is that? So easy. And I love that you can throw in, you know, leftovers that you have in the fridge. Quiches are amazing for leftovers. You know, leftover steamed veggies. You can, you know, pop it into the quiche. It's really good. That is done. Distribute over the quiche over the sauteed um, onion, uh, sorry, bacon. Um, there's something really making me itchy here. Um, I'm thinking I could have sauteed leek with the bacon. Yeah, could have done that and turned it into the, the leek quiche. All right, you just pour it on top. Okay, that is perfect. It hasn't gone above the pastry that, you know, the places where I'm missing pastry. <laughs> which is good and you sprinkle with cheese on top my kids are going to love this for lunch tomorrow so I'm not going to add a lot of cheese actually I've always got um uh, a bag of grated cheese in the freezer that I grate myself um so 
because you know if you grate your own cheese and you're avoiding additives like anti-caking agents anti-fungal agents because you know when you feel um grated cheese it feels a bit powdery that's because i've added this um stuff to it so i'm going to open my oven how long does it stay in the oven ah 25 minutes because i always have to put the timer in the oven because i forget i remember we had a bread class once and i popped at the end of the class popped bread in the oven one hour later i remember the bread and it was stone hard yep <laughs> so so I can be very distracted at 25 minutes. Okay, that looks awesome. Okay, 25, all right. So I'm gonna wash the bowl. Now um, I'll pop it washing here in the back. So to wash the bowl, there's two ways. You can use the Thermomix automated function and you just, you go to, uh, we just swipe to the left and we get all our modes and functions here. One of them, it, can I have a glass? Thanks. One of them, white wine, um, is called pre-clean and um, you can wash, it just washes the bowl by itself. So I usually do that if I'm, we're sitting down having dinner, the Thermomix is washing that bowl by itself. So it's, it's fantastic. But if I want to be really quick, just pop enough water to cover the blades. And then I add a drop of detergent in there, pop the thermix back in there, and then I'll just go to speed to the speed dial there and go to speed 10 for a few seconds. And then I know that whatever's on those blades just comes right off. But if I want a really deep clean, I go to the pre-clean mode and clean it that way. All right. There goes the measuring cup. That's why the TM5, the TM6 measuring cups are better because they don't fly off. So you can get them for your TM5. Um, there we go. So I'll pop that aside because I have a bowl, another bowl that I can grab. Oh, oh there's another measuring cup. See, that one doesn't fly off. <laughs> so you can get that for your tea and fives because the lids are the same. All right, now to dessert. This dessert is so yum. Uh, Reva, I don't even know how to say it. Let me just get to my week. So it's an Indian dessert. It's from the Indian cookbook. So we have a whole collection on Indian, a whole cookbook on Indian recipes. And it's from that book and you can find it on, on Cookie Do. So... I'll send you guys recipes to everything that we've made tonight and the links to them. So it's called Rava Payasam. Pay, payasam, Payasam, I don't know. Okay. So it's like a custard, but it's an Indian custard made with um, semolina. Yes. So um, we're going to, uh, so now it's telling me to weigh almonds and almonds and uh, sultanas because you're going to fry them with a bit of uh, butter in a fry pan and that's going to be the topping. Um, it says ghee. I've run out of ghee. Um, you can use butter, but what it does, it just caramelizes those sultanas with the almonds and it becomes really gooey and sticky and on top of the custard is just absolutely divine. Um, so, so this is just telling us about all, all that frying part. Okay, and you could have gone to the um, recipe details and then just select what step you wanted. But let's see. So 70 grams of semolina. And semolina from Woolies, I think from Coles, looks like it's, it's this packet. It's the macro brand. So a semolina is also great if you put on the bottom of your pizzas too. So you get a nice crusty pizza. All right, so it's only 70, 70 grams there. And... What's it telling it to do? 40 minutes just on 100 degrees speed two. Just one second. What's it doing? One minute. Ah, one teaspoon of egg. Okay, hang on. I've got to add um, a teaspoon of just a second. So because I don't have ghee, I'm going to add some butter. So one tablespoon of butter. That ghee was throwing me off. I thought it was for the fry pan. But no, it's from, so roughly 
a tablespoon and then you add your uh, semolina and now it's going to melt the butter with the semolina. Okay, so speed check. All right. Oh, I think I've, um, no, I think I've stuffed things up a bit. I should have melted that butter first. It should be okay. It should be fine, should work. Um, I was gonna mention something. Cut me now. Okay. All right, I'll pop that aside. Yeah, so that's gonna cook like a custard. When it's cooking and, and reaching the temperature for 90 degrees, because we're gonna add milk, it's stirring and cooking at the same time. So it's, it's, you're not gonna get like a lumpy custard, which you would get if you were to do this right now on the stove, melting the butter with some leno, you'd probably get lumps all over the place and it'd just be a whole big mess. But I know that with the Thermomix, that's not gonna happen. It'll be fine. Okay, so now, oh, it's just cooling down. This cooling down function, I'm not a big fan of, to be honest. It can be a bit of a pain sometimes. Okay, all right. So now it says to add the semolina. Yep, and yep, mix it together. And now 500 grams of the milk. Okay, so that butter should have melted, but it didn't. Okay, 500 grams of milk. And we're gonna pop the lid on. And so that's gonna cook now for seven minutes on 90 degrees on speed four. Now, let me just have a look and see how you can hear it topping up that butter. It's actually the same, like when you make bechamel sauce, you throw in all the ingredients, the butter, the, the, the flour, the milk, and as it's heating up and stirring, you, you're hearing that butter being all chopped up and um, it just turns out, turns out fine. Uh, so let me grab the other ingredients. The next one is a whole can of sweetened condensed milk. So this recipe is not for the faint hearted. Uh, it's not, if you're looking after your waistline, this, this recipe is for those who like a really good dessert, okay? So that's going to take a few minutes. And whilst we're waiting for that, let, oh, my kitchen's a mess right now. If only you guys could see. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Our bread is ready. Oh, here we go. So it's risen nicely. Now, what I'm going to do with these bread roll, breads is I'm going to turn them into individual bread rolls, but only like six of them because I'm going to make individual cob loaves for tomorrow afternoon for the family. So rather than making one massive cob loaf, um, I'm going to do six individual ones. So um, what I need to do is I need to weigh the dough. So let me just, so I weigh the dough and then I divide it into six portions. So let me just get the scales on there. And so I'll grab a plate, grab my dough, and then I weigh it and then divide it into six. All right. Okay. Oh, quick, Val, 800 divided by six. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just checking for you now. Hang on one sec. Thank you. My maths isn't that great. 800 divided by six. Yep. About 133 grams. 133. Oh, perfect. Yep. All right. So my scales are still there. So then I will weigh 100 and that's way too big. 133 grams roughly for each one. Okay. So then I get like a nice, uh, they're sort of all the same. That you, look, you don't have to do that, but. I'm a bit, um, actually, you know what, um, Val, can you divide that by four? By four? And, yeah, 830 divided by four. 830 or 800? Do 830. Okay, hang on one sec. Divided by four. <laughs> yeah, because I think six, I'll be very tiny cob loaves. So it's I'll about 207 four. grams. Okay. Give or take. Right. Perfect. Okay.
Okay, so that's something you can do with uh, recipe is you can, because it's a basic bread roll recipe, you can, um, you can turn it into anything. You can turn it into one massive loaf. You can do little dinner rolls. Yeah, very, very forgiving recipe. Yeah, all right, perfect. All right, and then to get them into a nice shape, um, I would, so that's thickening up already. I can hear it. I'll just pop it aside anyway, a bit loud. So I just roll the, the bottom up to the top into a ball like that and then turn it around and then just very gently with my hand, turn it into a nice, nice ball like that. So one, four of them, and you want them about a centimetre apart. And then I have to let these rise until they, uh, I'll show you, hang on, I'll put them on the tray then I'll show you. Okay, so my kids are really excited to get these cob loaves tomorrow. It's on Cookie Do, it's just called cob loaf. Um, and it just tells you to get a cob and then, uh, uh, you know, and use that for the rest of it. But, you know, if you can make it yourself, it's a lot better. Um, so these will be ready for tomorrow. And I know that with these four, four individual bread rolls, there'll be a lot of filling left over for that cob loaf because it makes a lot, like the recipe is, is huge. Um, so what I do is with the leftover filling, I freeze it and then I've got some filling for next time. So say I've got some bread, that I want to use up then I can just defrost that filling and I've got it ready for cob loaf. so I've spaced them like that apart and um, sprinkle some uh, some flour on top and when these are risen so almost to double in size so when they're touching each other they're ready to go in in the oven so you get some really nice soft bread rolls for my cob loaf. they're gonna look really cute I'll take some photos of what they they will look like but you know how simple was that really really easy to to make your own so i've got the quiche in the oven and once that's out of the oven then i'll pop those bread rolls okay all right so i'm gonna have a drink oh, my throat is so dry that's my excuse yum okay so we only have one minute to go on that recipe. Let's have a look. And then you want, I normally put them in these little things. So it makes about five, I think from memory, five or six. And then with that, uh, you, you get your um, slivered almonds or flaked almonds and you give them a little bit of a, so you toast them in the fry pan, add your sultanas, add some butter and just give that a mix and then you just pop it on, on top. So I don't think I'll have time to do that tonight, but um, I'll probably do that tomorrow just before serving. So we won't be having them tonight. They're, they're, nice, um, they're nice cold. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple of eggs as well to the recipe. Yeah, and a whole can of condensed milk. And I love this recipe because it's with some Molina um, and, and obviously the condensed milk. And it's just the most beautiful flavor. All right, so let's have a look because remember I stuffed up in the beginning, but it's nice and creamy. So there's no lumps there. And that is the beauty of doing things like that in the Thermomix is that it's almost foolproof. So you, you, some, you know, with a lot of things, you can think you've stuffed it up but then it just turns out really good in the end anyway, which I, I love. I love that about the mix. All right, so a whole can of condensed milk. Like I said, this isn't for the faint hearted. Really, really yum. Okay, you wanna get every single last drop out. You don't wanna leave any behind. And if I was by myself, I'd probably lick the spatula. I won't do that now in front of you. I want this one to lick my finger. <laughs> um, two tablespoons of pouring ripping cream. That's oh, a bit of a funny measurement, isn't it? You know, it's only two tablespoons of this. Very, I find it very weird. How does that change the whole consistency of the thing? I don't know. Two egg yolks. Let me just grab. 
one of these. So the, the egg yolks are going to thicken them, obviously. So these egg whites, I am going to save because we've run out of ice cream. And the kids have already been asking me, Mom, what flavoured ice cream are we going to make this time? Um, if you guys want the best ice cream recipe, oops, eggshell, let me know and I can send it to you. I think I'm going to go with, um, what do you call it, um, caramel. Make, so you make your own caramel. You make your own caramel praline with walnuts. Delicious. All right, there we go. So two egg yolks. I'm going to pop them in. And now we're just going to cook that for a few minutes. So four minutes on speed four. Now, it's just like making a custard. It's throwing, throwing in your ingredients. I haven't made custard in so long. Um, I think when you first get a Thermomix, especially years ago, you get a Thermomix, you have a demo. Custard was part of that demo all the time, whether it be chocolate custard, thick custard, a runny custard. Um, and so we would find ourselves eating custard a lot. And we sort of like get a bit over it after a while. But it's been that long since I've made custard. And, um, and um, yeah, I'm thinking I need to make it soon. Um, oh, I'm just cleaning up this bench. Okay. And there's so many variations to custard as well. Um, you know, there's so many different flavors that you can add. Um, one of our favorites during, um, during Christmas time was to add uh, Baileys to, to custard and you get like this Baileys flavored custard. <laughs> so that's thickened up, like you can really hear it, how thick that is. So, uh, and look, and uh, if you guys don't know, when I first came across the Thermomix, the first thing that I saw it making was um, bechamel sauce. And, um, and that's when I was sold on the machine because I saw how it could cook and mix at the same time. And bechamel sauce was something that I always made from scratch on the stove. It would take me forever, you know, stirring and stirring so I wouldn't get a lumpy bechamel. And when I saw that the Thermomix could do that in 12 minutes, I was absolutely sold. But mind you, I was somebody that I would never, ever, ever invest in something like a Thermomix because I just thought it was a stupid blender. I would never buy a Thermomix. Um, but I had never actually seen what it could do. And then when I actually saw what it can do, how we could help me in the kitchen, I, I bought one the next day. And um, I was living overseas at the time. And when I moved back to Australia, I called Thermomix and I said, I want to work for you. So, yeah, it's been seven years. It's been great. Okay, so that's only got another minute to go. So um, we've touched a bit on, on Cookie Do. So Cookie Do is our, our recipe platform that holds, uh, I can't remember now, but it's close to 9,000 recipes. Um, you know, th there was a bit of time when I went in, you know, when I had a look at a number of English recipes, so when I looked again and there was an extra 2,000 because it's not just Australia adding recipes to cookie do, it's all over the world that, uh, that you know, the, the UK, Canada, America, they, they're also adding English recipes, but also other countries, they will translate their most popular recipes to English as well. So 9,000 recipes, recipes, you won't go through them all in your lifetime. It's just, so you actually never run out of ideas of what to cook because it, what Cookie Do does, it, it knows how you like to cook because you, you, you set your preferences and then it, it gives you like recipe ideas as well. Now, Cookie Do is, a, you've, got, you've got to have a subscription. It's $49 a year or like a dollar a week, which is nothing. It's so cheap. But when you get a Thermomix for the first time, you log into your Cookie Do account on the screen, it adds six months free subscription to your to your account so you end up when you sign up with cookie do you can sign up for 30 day free trial so then you end up getting seven months for free and that will give you a really good idea if you're going to use it if you like it and i've honestly never had a customer that said no nah, i don't like it don't want to use it if, especially on the tm6 you'd want to have it because you're able to also search our cookie do here on the screen you can do it from your phone you can do it from your laptop any anywhere you can access a uh, the internet you can uh, use your cookie do or you can download the app as well there's a cookie do app 
So if you don't have it yet, you can download it for a 30 day free trial. Just, you know, have a look at the recipes and see if there's stuff that, that, that you'd like. Um, but yeah, highly recommend it. And I can tell you that all my customers that didn't have cookie dough and then got cookie dough, they say they use their Thermomix a lot more because of that access to, um, to the guided cookies uh, and to all those recipes as well. So there is our custard. So yeah, it makes a lot. So you just pour. So this is our Indian custard and you pour it into the ramekins, let it cool. And then you sprinkle with the slivered almonds or flaked almonds and the sultanas. If you've got ghee, even better, because ghee's got that nutty taste. If you've never made ghee in a Thermomix, you have to. It is so good. And it's just 500 grams of um, butter, 500, 500 grams of butter, chuck it all in the Thermomix and it cooks it for two hours and it separates those um, milk solids and you're left with, with ghee. All right, so make six. There we go. All right. Um, so I'll take some photos of these tomorrow when I put my nice topping on top. But yeah, if you've got the ingredients at home, make this because you won't be disappointed. So I'm not going to waste what's in the bowl. That's This has got to go in there for sure. All right, so we, we're going to have a feast tomorrow. My family, every time I have one of these, mommy, what did you make? What did you make? What do you have to eat? They're like vultures. I come running into the kitchen to see what I've made. <laughs> it's too funny. All right, so that's quite hot. So this is why you've got to wait until it cools down. That quiche is looking really nice. And then these will go in the oven. And as we've been talking, they've risen really nice. And so they're nice and spongy. Um, so they'll be ready to go in the oven soon. So just a few more things before we log off. I just my bench is really dirty right now okay so cooking experiences um have a chat to your consultant because you can um, have your own this is a group one but if you have your own with um with your consultant you can you, you know you can have a chat with your consultant about what to cook so you know something that both of you can agree on because it's got to be something that your consultant is also going to eat because it's virtual um, you know, we can't cook something that then we, we're going to throw away. So keep that in mind as well. So just be a little bit flexible at this time. But just keep in mind also, it's not about the dish. It's not about the, it's not about the actual dish. It's not about the recipe. It's, it's how you get to that final result. So it's, it's seeing how you can chop an onion and garlic in um, five seconds. It's seeing about how you can saute on its own without you having to supervise. It's showing you how it can heat and stir um, in one go. So it's not about how this tastes because if I was to make this on the stove, it would take me over half an hour, but making it there on the stove or making it here, the flavor is exactly the same. The flavor is not gonna change. What changes is just how easy it was in the Thermomix. That's the difference with seeing it in the Thermomix. So keep that in mind when you're considering having uh, a demo because, you know, we're in Sydney, so we're in lockdown. We can only do virtual right now, okay? Um, and you can go to as many of these things as you like, whether it's run by your consultant or by myself. I, I run this for my consultant's customers. And the more you go to, the more you're going to learn. And this is just going to ensure that you're going to get the most out of your Thermomix. And also don't forget, but by having your own virtual demo, inviting your friends, even though it's virtual, you can still get host rewards. So have a chat to your consultant as to what those host rewards are because they're really, really good. And we also run cooking classes. So I know I've been saying this for a few weeks, but I'm being just so busy but we have decided on what cooking classes we're going to run as a team and they'll be up very shortly and I'll send you the links to those. And again, they're all free, all free, except that one on Sunday, which because it's a full day thing, that one is $10 per, per ticket, which is also an absolute bargain considering, you know, what you're going to learn from, from that full day. So, so yeah. Um, so if you're looking at getting a Thermomix or getting your second Thermomix, you can, um, you can join Thermomix. That's, that's an option of getting a Thermomix on your kitchen bench, whether it's your first one or your second one. You can um, get it just by making a few sales and, you, and you've got yourself a free Thermomix. Um, we also have 36 months interest free at the moment. So it's only 
89 a week. I know it's under $17 um, a week, which is so affordable, but that's only available until the 12th of August. So that's only on for a limited time. And then it goes back to 24 months interest free. But look, if you want more information on that, please speak to your consultant and they'll um, be able to, to give you that. And, um, and that's it. We've got awesome accessories in our mix shop. So have a look. And when you, um, when, when you are in the mix shop and you're at checkout, just make sure your consultant's name is there um, because that's just a, a little, just a little gift that we get from Thermomix with commission on our uh, mix shop uh, sales that purchases that our, that our customers, ah, oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Purchases that our customers made. That's what I was trying to say. All right. Uh, the quiche is done. Okay. Um, all right. So we are done. All right, guys. Well, again, apologies for me being late before. <laughs> but um, I hope if you're uh, a customer and you have a Thermomix that you picks up some nice tips tonight and you're going to try some of these recipes, try the custard. Trust me, it's just amazing. Um, and if you're new, if, um, yeah, if you have any questions, if you want to see more, have a, a chat to your consultants as well. And um, I think that's it. Awesome. Uh, Val, um, yeah, I'm sure you are on top of the chat, but does anyone have any questions? Anyone want to come up to you and ask me anything? Far away? No? All right, I'm going to be, you're welcome, Annette. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Oh my gosh, homeschooling is doing my head in. <laughs> homeschooling and everything else. Oh my gosh, it's Friday night. So I'm just like uh, br totally brain dead. <laughs> I'm sure lots of mums can relate. Yeah. Okay, we'll have a fabulous weekend, everyone. I'm going to be, be running one of these every Friday. So we'll keep you posted. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay at home. <laughs> you're welcome susan thanks for coming oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, where are they? val you there i'm here <gasps> it was so funny Oh yeah, good one. Thank you. What would I do without you? <laughs> <laughs>